All right, good evening, everyone. This is the opening of the Monday, October 19th, 2020 Conservation, Norton Conservation Commission meeting, and we are still obligated to read um, the preamble uh, concerning the need to do these meetings remotely. So pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order superseding certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, General Law Chapter 30A, uh, Paragraph 18, and governor's, the Governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitation on the number of people that may gather in one place. This meeting of the Norton Conservation Commission will be conducted by a remote participation to the greatest extent possible. Specific information and the general guidelines for remote participation by members of the public and or parties with a right and or requirement to attend this meeting can be found at the end of this agenda. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Uh, and I'm going to ask at this time, Jen, have you pushed the record button? Um, that's an excellent point, Julian. I didn't see it up there on my screen, but I, I will continue. Uh, and uh, it will be explained that we are in the middle of our preamb preamble. Um, all right, we were... Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, in the event we are unable to do so, despite the best efforts, we will post on Norton Cable website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. And since the record button was not on for the initial introduction, this is Monday, October 19th, 2020, Norton Conservation Commission uh, meeting beginning at 6.30 p.m. and it is now 6.34 and unless there are any other questions uh, we can uh, open the meeting with item A which is request for determination of applicability uh, 1101 for Kathleen and Eric Wilbur of 186 North Worcester Street uh, and that concerns a project to install an in-ground pool and associated grading with 100 foot of wetlands. So do we have a, uh, a representative of the applicant for that project? We do. Good evening. It's Kathleen Wilbur. Hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. You can see the screen. Can you see the plan? I can um, see you guys there. Can oh. you see me? We, we don't have it up yet. You may have to try again. Okay, hold on just a second, please. <laughs> How about now? Not quite yet. Okay. less cooperative tonight but we'll get it hold on just a second thank you that? looks like you're sharing there you go okay good okay kathleen just explain um your project and where you'd like to put the pool sure absolutely so we're looking to place an in-ground 21 by 40 um cool at 186 north worcester um, we have existing conservation fencing up, and so it's not outside of that boundary. We already know where the boundary is. That came when we bought the house. It is literally right in the middle of our, the back of our house. So you'll see the house is here, and the pool is going almost right off the deck. So it's not, it's about 14 or 15 feet from that post fence. Um, it will be all level with the highest grade. There will be no backwashing of the pool or the filter system. Um, very easy accessibility. The driveway flows right into the backyard, so we're not going to be needing to even touch a bush to get like big trucks back there. Um, no fencing to take down. Um, so it's all well within the boundary of the split fence that's there now from conservation. 
um, and there's actually a, a existing thing that's already there when we bought the house, so it's even within that that um, function there. Um, again, it's in ground pool vinyl. Um, McCarthy out of Southboro is going to be doing it. We picked them because they have about 50 years of experience and felt pretty good with them. Um, anything excess is leaving with McCarthy pool. It's not staying in our yard. It's not being dumped anywhere. Um, so literally, we don't even need to touch a leaf on a tree or anything to do this project. Um, it's literally going to be in the backyard, which is pretty much dead grass right now. So we're looking forward to filling that with something that looks better than that. Um, All right. Anything else? So, anything else I can answer for you guys? So uh, I see on the plan there are three uh, lines that are colored uh, lime green, or roughly. Um, I assume the, the one is the wetland line, and then there is a, Correct. I assume that's the 100 foot buffer uh, line. Correct. And then the existing post and rail fence looks like it's yellow. Correct. All right, so uh, any um, questions from any of the members of the commission? And remember, you'll have to take your mic off mute. So with no questions, we can uh, open up to uh, any uh, butters or other people who want to comment. And uh, let's see, uh, can we do a, you can also raise your hand and I'm looking at the list here. I don't see any hands raised. So that being the case, we can consider uh, the next step, which is uh, that this does not appear to be a controversial project. Everything seems to be in order so we can potentially consider a, a vote to close the the hearing on the determination. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll make uh, a motion to uh, close uh, the hearing on DET number 1101. All right, motion made by Dan Pearson. Second. Seconded by Ron. Uh, so we'll do a roll call vote. We'll start with Ron. Aye. And Gene, are you in that picture or not? You are? Yes. Aye. All right. So that's an aye. And then we have uh, Dan Pearson. I'm assuming you're an aye. Yes. Aye. And then somewhere along I saw Lisa was on the meeting. Yep. She... Aye. Ah, yes. Okay. And then I'll throw in an aye. So uh, the motion carries. And... Um, uh, we, I think we can act on the, uh, the determination uh, once we get through all of the hearings. So, uh, so uh, Ms. Wilbur, thank you for appearing tonight. Uh, I don't, it does not appear to be controversial, so I think we'll uh, be closing this out with a what's called a negative determination, but it actually means you do not have to file an order of conditions. Okay, very well. Thank you. Do you need anything else from me this evening, or am I all set? Julian, did you just want to make that vote now so we can continue with the rest of the meeting instead of going we back? Can. We can. It's a quick vote. Anybody want to offer a, uh, a motion on a potentially negative three determination? I'll make no. a motion to I'll second. Three negative three. All right. We have a motion made by Ron and seconded by Dan Pearson. All those in, well, we'll go roll call again of Ron. Aye. Gene? Aye. Dan Pearson? Aye. Lisa. Aye. And I'll say an aye. So we're done with that. Right. That was a that was a signature, uh, electronic signature procedure. Excellent. So you're all set with me now? Yeah. yeah. I, I appreciate it, guys. You made us really happy. Thank you. Okay. We'll email you. that tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. You guys have a great night. Thank you. you too. Right. And uh, unless there are any questions, next item on the agenda is request for determination of applicability and determination number 1102 for Paul Wheeler, 5 Beverly Lane. The proposed project involves plans to remove trees within 100 foot of wetlands. And um, we're looking for a plan here and a representative of the applicant. Looks like Mr. Wheeler is 
in the meeting. Do you see the plan? We don't see it yet. Okay. Take two. How's that? All right. You see a plan. Okay, and it looks like Paul is muted and he's ready to go. All right. So um, basically the proposal that we have is um, the, the submitted application covers three methods of addressing the property's tree needs within the 100-foot wetlands. The decision for removal for the tree was based on their deterioration health, uh, current and future risk to the critical areas throughout the property. The decision for pruning of a tree was based on their encroachment overhanging and dead wood in critical areas throughout the property. The use of stump grinding would be used where applicable throughout the property. Um, starting at the driveway up here, uh, we have, um, starting at the driveway, we have our main utility service coming in from the street, which comes in over here. Um, we're proposing removing and pruning select trees along the driveway and immediately the immediate boundary all the way down to the shed area. The lines from the house come here across into here. This tree has to go because it's growing up into the wires and it's a pine tree. It's a nominal uh, uh, diameter. Um, additional pruning that goes up over across the driveway is recommended also just to clear the avenue of line. Additional pruning across the driveway because we have additional trees that go over the lines. Along the edge here we have additional trees. Um, one larger tree that leans towards the home and smaller trees along here. And this is like directly on the line of, of, of uh, green area that I maintain in the line to the, uh, the wetland area. This tree over here is an old oak tree which is already shedding big branches and I haven't necessarily got something into a shed yet but I have a lot of debris in the back from that particular uh, tree. Suggesting pruning as we continue forward uh, consent consists of uh, just keeping just taking the approach the encroachment back a little bit the trees are hanging very much over the area we have a particular tree here which is leaning towards my deck uh, that's an issue because we have septic we have a deck area and we have a generator gas generator right here so that poses a hazard that that actually leans very close to the deck during the winter time over here is an additional tree that has grown very large and also pitches towards that whole area. All those trees, these trees clearly can go and hit something um, if they ever did go over. The trees in the back here are more considered more um, high risk in the fact that there's a dog area back here that the dog goes into. And again, they're failing pines, white pine trees, no needles. Um, that sort of thing. As you as you further travel along here, it's more pruning because there is a uh, fire pit back here. Um, so pruning along here. These pine trees along here, again, are failed pine trees. We've got pruning, another pine tree, additional pruning along the perimeter inside of the house. And as, as you can see here, it just continues. So it's really just to, to um, mitigate risk against high travel, high frequency areas that we're in for the family, for the dog, for us, and especially anything that's obviously very important, which is septic, um, gas generator, deck, that sort of thing. So it's really just to mitigate any type of risk or anything. All right, so uh, any questions about the details of the project? Um, I do have a few. Um, so it looks like you're taking down about 20 trees? Um, I wouldn't say, I don't think 20. Uh, the majority of the trees, just so you know, are, are dead. Like, like the trees in here are no needle pine trees that, that are under the canopy and they're just, they're just, at, at some point they're going to go over. Right, but if we, if we 
take this plan literally, it looks like you have X's on about 20 trees. So is that what we're... Um, well, maybe as far as removing? Well, I, well, that's the first question I had was I assume the X's, there's no, there's no um, legend yes. on this plan. Oh, well, my, my, my apologies. The X's are removal and P's yes. are room, yes. Right, that's what I figured. Okay, so it looks like there's about 20 trees. Okay. Um, are there diameters on any of these trees? Um, or? The majority of the trees are probably less, probably than 10, 10 inches diameter. Okay. They've already, they're, they're not going to, my, my belief is that they are just waiting to fall at some mm -hmm. point. Sure. So did you say you were going to have them stumped, the stumps removed? Um, I, yes, uh, we're applicable, yes. Like if it's along like any type of property here, like along property area here, I probably would directly. Yes, I would just to minimize the, the, um, the, the debris or, or, or the stump itself. Okay. I mean, we're not adverse, obviously, to leaving stumps whenever possible. Just it minimizes the amount of earth disturbance. So feel free to leave them wherever you want. Okay. It's, it's actually a little better if you do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. And it costs a lot more to have them stumped. So. Sure. I mean, that's good to know. Yeah. <laughs> I and just so you know, I am still in the process. I've had have had vendors come out, take a look at the situation. And it's been more by due diligence that I've come to the point where we're at, where I'm presenting, and just trying to get some approval to what we're trying to do here to, to minimize, uh, mitigate risk. So. Okay. Uh, so, Lisa, that's uh, you're all set with questions? Yes, thanks. All right. Any other questions from members of the commission? And if not, if there are any questions from members of the audience, and if there's a no on that, oh, I see uh, there's a hand up from a Julie Oakley. Hi, yes, this is Julie Oakley. I live at 6 Beverly Lane. We're, we're neighbors with Paul, and I just wanted to um, call in and say, um, as in a butter, we have no issues with any of the tree removal that Paul's proposing, and I uh, think that is a wise idea to see that he's looking to remove, you know, dead trees that could fall within his property or uh, an adjacent property. So just wanted to call in and, and support Paul in this proposal. All right, fair enough. Thank you. And um, so if there are no other comments, I don't see any other hands up. Um, we will uh, consider a vote on closing the uh, hearing for determination number 1102. Make a motion to close the hearing for determination 1102. Second. And a motion made by uh, Ron and seconded by Dan Pearson. So roll call vote. I guess we can start with you, Lisa. Aye. And Ron? Aye. And Jean? Aye. Dan Pearson? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So being back in our regular meeting, we can consider a vote on the project, um, which seems to have no objections, and we can consider a uh, motion for a negative three. I'll make that That's motion. That's the good answer, Paul. Okay. <laughs> All right. A motion That's made by Gene and, and seconded by Ron, I believe. Yes. All right. And uh, so, Lisa, I, Aye. 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 Ron? Aye. Gene? Aye. Dan Pearson? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So we're all set with that. Thank you, Mr. Wheeler. Thank you so much. We'll, we'll get you an email out tomorrow, but that's the good answer. That's the one you want. Excellent. We're all set. I don't need to hang on. You don't need to stay on the call now. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. So uh, next item on the agenda is a notice of intent with uh, no file number at least listed on the agenda yet for Valentine Tool and Stamping uh, Incorporated on Baker Street. Uh, the proposed project is to construct a single family dwelling with subsurface sewage disposal system within 100 foot of bordering vegetated wetland. So um, 
not sure why this is under Valentine's tool and stamping, but uh, maybe that will be discussed. Do we have a representative of the project? Yes, I'm here. This is Brian Dunham, the principal and president of MVL Land Development and Permitting with offices at 770 Broadway in Rainham. And also on the call tonight is um, Tracy Duart, our project manager, and also Justin Williams. And I think Chuck Valentine is on the, on the call as well. All right, you have a description of the project. Yep, you want me to do it, Brian? That would be great, thanks, Tracy. Yeah. Um, the project is for the construction of a single family house. It's on assessor's map 16 lot two, but that's actually a larger parcel uh, with frontage on Freeman and Baker Street, it's a 47 acre parcel. We're planning to do a form A to carve out this one acre lot um, for the single family house. The wetland resource areas on site were delineated by LSC consultants this summer. Um, she delineated an isolated uh, vegetated wetland to the south of the property and um, bordering vegetated wetland along the proposed westerly lot line. The proposed uh, four bedroom house and driveway and most of the utilities are located outside of the 100 foot buffer zone, but a portion of the septic system and the site grading are located within 100 feet uh, of the bordering vegetated wetlands. So at its closest point, the septic system is 79.4 feet from the wetlands and the limit of grading and disturbance is about 58.9 feet. We're proposing a, a filter mat sediment control along that uh, limit of work. And we've also received some comments from Jennifer, so we will be revising the plans um, to move the no disturbance zone to the limit of work and to call out that a uh, split rail fence will be installed there too. And I did just check the DEP website. There's still no file number issued. Yeah, so did I. Yes, there's nothing there. We'll probably get it tomorrow morning, kind of like the last time we made a filing. It came out Tuesday morning. I, I don't think you will, Brian. I got an email just this after, late this afternoon from Gary McCutch saying he hasn't received a copy of the notice of intent. So you may want to make sure they get you get a copy to DEP. Okay, we'll verify that okay. that's been delivered. I, I know. I know that we have delivered a copy to them. So, um, but I'll, we'll, I'll double check and make sure. So you have a informational right. flyer, important information for applicants. Make sure you use both emails to I'm sorry, Jennifer, you were kind of breaking up when you were speaking. So you have, you received a copy of the pamphlet, important information for applicants. Right? Yes. Okay, make sure you use both emails for DEP. You have to list it as NOI with the, the specific way they want the subject line. Make sure you do that. Okay, we'll, we'll circle back and make sure that that's, that's verified. If it hasn't been done, we'll make sure that it is done. Okay. All right, so any questions from members of the commission? Uh, I have another uh, uh, you were breaking up question. Uh, the the uh, kind of uh, fence that Tracy said, I assume it was post and rail? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Any other? I, have, I have a couple. Okay. Um, so, you mentioned that somebody delineated an isolated vegetated wetland. It, it's actually labeled as ILSF. And I'm not quite sure why you'd want to show a delineation on somebody else's property. Um, so first of all, if you can clarify whether it's IVW or ILSF. And that should be an isolated vegetated wetland. Right, because I don't think you can determine ILSF without the calcs. So yeah, now I have a report, so that's a typo on the plan we can fix. Okay. So, but that's not all part of this property, correct? No, it's just off the property line. Okay. But I guess you just wanted to show that the buffer zone didn't extend onto the site? Yeah. yeah. From yeah. that side. And the property line, you know, it's hard to tell in the field. Okay. Um, the other question, let's see. Oh, here's, oh, so sediment control, and I don't know if Jennifer addressed this, actually goes out into the, I assume that's a public way, Baker Street? 
Yes, that's a, yeah. that's actually a constructed way. It's a public, it's a public right of way. Right. So I don't think you want to filter it going in the public right away, right? I think you want to stop it short at the property line. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Um, and then it looks like you ha also have the filter mitt along the entire uh, side that's not facing the wetland. Is that just to delineate the limit of work? It's more limit of work and then also with the uh, isolated vegetated wetland along the bottom of the site to protect that as well. So but your standard, your standard mitt you showed um, uh, two in your standard detail? Uh, that's probably the overlapping section when when you're at a joint. Um, oh, you showed the overlap detail, not just a single. So in your in your um, in one of the views, yeah, it looks like there's. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah, there's one above it. That's yeah. the single. So and the what one below it is the overlap. What size is the typical filter mitt? They're pretty large. They're. Um, they have 18 inch, which sometimes are hard to get, uh, and they have 12 inch. Yeah, those are those are rather on the large side. Usually, it's eight to nine for nominal. Okay. So, I mean, how much? If you don't have a lot of fill on this site, yeah, probably go with a smaller size. But I don't think it's called out there, so you just want to make sure the contractor knows what size to pick to install there. Okay. Is it a preference of the size? Well, uh, Lisa or, or, or Jennifer? Typically, if there's not a lot of fill, that they won't be side casting material against it, the nominal size is between, I think, 9 and 10. So we can look for a smaller one. All right, so we can, we can change the plans to make it smaller. Okay. Yeah, right now there's no call out on the size. Yeah, on the detail it says 18 inches. Whoa. Yeah, that's, that's rather large. Yeah. Um, okay, that's all I had. Oh, and just so you know, the, the locust map was really hard to, I couldn't even tell where we were on the locust map. It's kind of blurred out. Jennifer, could you pan over to the locust yeah. map? It might just be the copy I have. Um, people might be in the way. Where, um... Oh, it's just in the top right. Top right. Oh, see, that's in color. That's why. <laughs> the one I have is black and white. It's all smudged. I can't read the street name. Okay. Okay, great. That's all I had, Julian. All right. Um, okay, so any questions from other members of the commission? And I was just looking for raised hands. I don't see any. Uh, no questions from members of the audience. Uh, and if not, uh, so this is a notice of intent. We're going to have to wait for the file. Uh, so it will require a continuation, but um, right now um, things look pretty straightforward. So, issuing order conditions once the file number is available. So, uh, is it acceptable that we uh, that we do a continuation till uh, let's see, our next meeting is listed as uh, November 9th. I'm sorry, that's kind of breaking up, Jennifer. Did he say November 8th or 9th? November the 9th, the applicant. Okay, November the 9th. Okay. okay. Yeah, that would give us some time to circle back with DEP and talk to Bernadette or Gary. I, you know, it's surprising that uh, Gary's reaching out. Uh, I hope everything's okay with Bernadette. So. Bernadette left. Oh. She's at, she's at um, Ecological Restoration now. Okay. Right, so uh, with your permission, well, I'll entertain a motion for continuation. Uh, that might have gotten lost in the uh, okay. whatever. Okay, Lisa made a motion for the continuation. 
I'll uh, second till November that. 9th and uh, seconded by Me, Ann Pearson. Yeah. Yep. So roll call vote. That would be Ron. Aye. And Gene. Aye. And Lisa. Aye. And Dan Pearson. Aye. And I'll be an aye, so uh, we will reconnect on uh, November 9th, although it doesn't appear to be anything controversial that we need to deal with. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So we can move on. Aye, right, you're very welcome. So we can move on to, um, um, this is a continued uh, notice of intent, file number 250-1067 for um, uh, Stephen Schleidel of 116 Lincoln Street, um, and it concerned a project to construct family, single family home within 100 foot of bordering vegetated wetland. Um, and so we have a order of conditions on attachment A. Uh, should we, um, so we, we can certainly entertain a motion to close the, the hearing. Um, and then we can potentially work uh, act on the order of conditions at the end of the yeah, hearings. All right, so a motion to, uh, there are no further items to be discussed on this hearing. Is that correct? No, that's correct. All right, so I can entertain a motion for closing uh, the uh, the hearing on file number 250-1067. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that motion. We have a motion made by Dan Pearson and seconded by? Gene. Uh, Gene. Uh, roll call vote, Ron? Aye. Gene? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Dan Pearson? Aye. And myself as an aye. So the that hearing is closed and we'll deal with the order of conditions after we complete the other hearings. Next item on the agenda is file number 250-1060. This is also continued from multiple uh, prior hearings, and uh, the proposed this concerns uh, 64 Elm Street. With the proposed project is to repair and replace an existing septic system with associated gratings, grading utilities, and tree removal within 100 foot of a buffering vegetated wetland. So, there were expected new plans. So what what uh, what ne uh, needs to be provided. Uh, so Jamie is on the call. If you want to unmute yourself, you can do that, Jamie. Uh, good evening, everybody. Jamie Bissonette from Zenith Consulting Engineers, for the record. Um, we've been working with the Board of Health um, on a peer review. Uh, we're using an advanced technology, as you, as you had saw on the um, probably four or five meetings ago. Um, and so the Board of Health had a, another engineering firm review the plans. We did get the thumbs up from the review engineer. Um, and we've also made the changes um, as asked for by, uh, by your commission. Um, we emailed over updated plans today, um, but we still have not had our meeting with the Board of Health. The Board of Health wanted us to address the issues um, with the uh, peer review and then do the meeting. So I did reach out to Chris, Christian today um, and, and trying to find out when the meeting date is going to be. Hopefully it will be in the next uh, couple of weeks and uh, we can get this thing closed now. So unless there are further questions from either the commission or members of the audience, uh, it seems like uh, this would be appropriate to uh, have a continuation till November 9th. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to continue file number 250-1060 to the meeting on November 9th. All right, motion made by Dan Pearson and seconded by? Second. Uh, Ron, so I just want to clarify, I assume, uh, Jamie, that's acceptable? Oh, that, that's absolutely perfect for me. All yep. right, so roll call uh, vote, Ron? Aye. Uh, and Gene? Aye. Lisa? Aye. Dan Pearson? Aye. Myself is an aye. All right, thank you. Thank you, have a good night. Thank Bye. you. Jamie, please make sure I have a hard copy of the plan. Absolutely. We'll get, that out. Today, we'll get that out tomorrow. How many would you like? Just one is fine. Okay. That'll go tomorrow. 
Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so next on the agenda is is a discussion, request for an amendment for file number 250-1037, uh, 1037. Next grid, uh, Redwood LLC on, uh, concerning 54 Plain Street. And um, do we have a representative of that? Or maybe we can uh, clarify what the discussion is about. Uh, you have two representatives on the line. They can unmute themselves. So Sean or Chris. Uh, good evening, everyone. This is uh, Sean Cooper, uh, representing uh, Next Grid um, Redwood LLC for the 54 Plain Street Solar Project. Um, with us tonight, as well as Chris King uh, from Atlantic engineers uh who is the civil engineer record on this project um i am the uh my apologies i didn't introduce myself uh, correctly but i am with amps electric uh we are the epc uh constructor for this project uh located in waltham massachusetts as well as with a place of business on old colony road in north mass um at this time, what I'll do is I'll turn this over to Chris King to introduce the uh, proposed changes and uh, open the floor for discussion for anything that you guys would like us to clarify for you. And uh, Chris King, it looks like you have to unmute your mic. trouble so Julian I can't actually see that um, participant list anymore so I just made you a co-host if you want to unmute him maybe that would help um, okay so I see ask to unmute is an, an option so I can uh, all I can do is ask to unmute though okay. yep that's fine all right so I see he's gone to a phone Okay. Um, but it's still it's still muted. Let's see if we got that. Oh, can you hear me now? Okay, we can hear you now. Ooh. Sorry, guys. I apologize for that slight no audio problem. difficulty. Um, again, I appreciate your time. Uh, sorry to keep you waiting for a couple couple minutes there. Um, as noted, we're um, uh, before the commission. This project was approved um, some time ago, um, and we experienced a couple different delays uh, getting ready to start construction. Um, but we're finally to the point where we're hopefully pushing the project over the goal line. Um, and similar to uh, many solar projects, when we permitted as a permitting engineer, we you know, our permitting a footprint, so to speak, and once the project is purchased and before it goes into construction based on the available technology and equipment procurement, comes up with a slightly different array layout. Um, so um, the applicant has um, requesting the amendment to allow for the, basically the change to the project layout um, as you see on the resubmitted site plans. Um, the array itself is just slightly configured, uh, whether it be the row to row spacing um, or the panel size or the panel count. Um, but, you know, I think most importantly, as it um, as the commission is concerned, the project uh, realizes the approved limit of clearing and the approved setbacks that were previously approved by the commission. Um, some of the notable changes um, if you're looking at the plan that's up right now, is the location of the equipment pad itself. Um, it's again, it's been a while. I don't expect you to remember, but when the project was initially approved by the commission, the equipment pad was located right at the angle point of the property line that runs adjacent to the elementary school, right in that area. Um, as one of our conditions of approval, we were required to perform soil confirmatory test pits. 
uh, to make sure that where we were proposing infiltration BMPs, the soil was conducive to such. Um, those test pits were performed in April of this year. Um, based on those test pits, the soil in the area where we were previously proposing the pad, uh, that soil is not conducive to infiltration. Um, and so we are proposing to relocate that pad exactly further to the rear of the array. Um, again, that's within the previously approved footprint still outside of the prescribed buffer zones. Um, and so really the impact, I guess, if so to speak, and I'll use the term loosely, is as it relates to stormwater. Um, but again, it's uh, very minimal in the scope of things. We're actually relocating the equipment pad the same BMP measures associated with that pad, um, but we're locating it in an area where when the project was first submitted to the commission, um, we went back and forth, if you will, on the requirement to do test pits at that time. Um, and we did perform test pits, I believe it was in February um, of the, uh, you know, the year we initially filed with you folks. And we actually have test pit data that was submitted um, that shows soils in that area that are conducive to the infiltration. So um, again, we've submitted all that information um, with the uh, request for the amendment showing that where we're reloc relocating the pad to, um, the soils are conducive to the infiltration. Um, the other change as it relates to stormwater BM BMPs is towards the front of the project. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the site where we have an existing residence right along Plain Street. Um, so, you know, per the stormwater report that was reviewed by the commission and Mr. Chessia, um, that portion of the project we're considering as a redevelopment um, in order to meet, uh, you know, certain parameters. We're reducing the amount of impervious area. And previously we were proposing a infiltration area in the landscaped island that is in the, yeah, exactly right there with a uh, cursor is, um, which is in the middle of the existing residential driveway to remain. Again, more of a function of the test pits that were performed in April of this year. Uh, groundwater is actually, um, you know, not only is groundwater high, but the soils, unlike the areas to the rear, the soils there are just, they're, they're not well draining soils. Um, for a pretty significant depth. Um, so understanding that is a redevelopment portion. Um, I guess technically we're act asking for a waiver from the stormwater bylaw to allow us to eliminate that portion of the infiltration. And what we, basically we were not able to provide recharge um, um, due to soil conditions and, and groundwater. And we're asking, um, you know, for approval to provide treatment, if you will, um, to the maximum extent practicable. Um, and, you know, again, we've been coordinating with um, not only um, Jennifer Carlino, but also uh, John Chessia. Um, and he recommended that uh, instead of removing everything in its entirety, that we keep the vegetated filter, filter strip, excuse me, with the P-Stone um, uh, filter strip in front of it, um, just as an additional measure to truly disconnect the existing impervious to remain. Um, so again, we feel like that falls within the criteria of not only the stormwater policy, but also the local stormwater bylaw. Um, so we're asking for um, you know permission to eliminate that at the front portion of the project. Um, other than that, there aren't uh, too many other significant changes. We are eliminating a portion of the gravel access um, that's more of a function of the prescribed maintenance. Um, and so, um, you know, we haven't received any feedback to my knowledge. I haven't checked my email within the last, you know, hour and a half or so, but I don't believe we've received any feedback. So, um, you know, at this point in time, I'd like to open it up for any questions uh, anyone might have. All right. Uh, Jen, do you have any comments on this? I don't. It took a while, but we have the revised plans and we're ready to make an amended order. All right. Any questions from members of the commission? Um, you, you, said, you mentioned that the layout is new. So did the number of panels increase with that? 
I, you know, to be honest, I don't have a, a, everything came together very quickly. And so we, as a civil engineer, we typically will get the layout from the electrical engineer as far as the exact number of panels. Um, I don't know exactly um, if it was increased or, or decreased from what was originally permitted. What I do know for sure is that you know, it still falls within the same pres prescribed setbacks, the same fence line, the same lim limit of clearing. Okay. The same areas where we previously approved just, you know, pollarding or stumping, um, you know, remain the same. Okay. So there's no additional tree clearing or anything? No. No, no. We're not, ex if from a footprint standpoint, if you will, we're not expanding our footprint in any way, shape, or form for this one. We're working really within the fence line. That's kind of our hard, our hard perimeter. Okay, so the relief that you want from the local bylaw in, in terms of stormwater treatment uh, looks like you is, is that associated with just the front of the parcel? Correct, just the front of the parcel, and you know, keeping in mind it's you know technically a redevelopment. Um, you know, it's it's somewhat subject to interpretation, but you're. You know, from a recharge and a, a TSS for a phosphorus removal standpoint, um, you know, you, if you meet certain criteria, then you're tasked with meeting the other standards to the maximum extent practicable, um, which we, and, you know, intended to do. But once we got the confirmatory soil test that's in April, um, all parties who weighed in deem that, that, that just the front part for whatever the case may be, the soil just was not conducive to infiltration. They thought it was you know, appropriate to, hopefully if I'm not speaking, you know, for them, they thought it was appropriate to, considering it was a redevelopment, to remove it, uh, throw as much as we could at it, which would be the vegetated filter strip and the P-stone gravel strip, um, which is shown on the plan before you. Um, right. And that that would be, you know, but, adequate. But the point is, you're not looking for relief from the back, from the panel, the section that will be paneled, it's just the front. Correct. The redevelopment portion, if you will. Okay. All right, and Jennifer Chessie is good with with this approach. Yes, they they meet all of the stormwater standards okay. for the rear portion for all the new work. It's just okay. that one section out front where they couldn't infiltrate because of the soils. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other questions from members of the commission? Any questions from members of the audience looking for? Um, raised hands I don't see any so um, it looks like uh, this is something uh, this is not a hearing this is a discussion so uh, there's no uh, motion to close is that correct would be a motion to issue an amended order okay. um, and and we can do that at the after oh actually are we finished with our it looks like we're finished with our hearings to where people are going to be waiting to discuss things. Does that sound right? No. All right. Close. You're not done yet. But um, you would close the public hearing because it was advertised. Oh, okay. Well, okay. All right. Well, we can entertain um, a motion to close the public hearing for the request for an amendment for file number 250-1032. I'll make that motion. I'll second. Lisa makes the motion and seconded by Dan Pearson. Roll call vote. Ron? Aye. Gene? Aye. And uh, Lisa? Aye. And Dan Pearson? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So um, the uh, hearing is closed and it looks like we have um, a, an amended order that we can vote on after we complete our list of hearings. So next item is notice of intent uh, for file number 250-1065 concerning Leonard Street phase two. Uh, the owner is, uh, I guess, zero Leonard Street LLC, but at any rate, it's continued from September 14th. And um, it looks like there's additional work going on in the background and I see a statement of a request for continuation for November 9th. Do we have a representative or do we proceed to that motion? 
sorry, which one did you just read? Uh, it's H. Yeah, G. Huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. We got to back up to G. This is a... Oh. We have one more discussion. We have two more discussions. I see. I, I Somehow I got discussion in my mind, and you're right. G is listed as a discussion. Yes. Um, so request for an amendment for 250-1032. Correct. And Tim McGuire on the, on the call here. Hey, good evening, hey. everyone. Can you hear me? We yeah. can hear you. Yes. Yep. For the record, my name is Tim McGuire. I'm a wetland scientist with Goddard Consulting here on behalf of the applicant, Tom McConey. I believe I'm accompanied by Craig Saganowski from RIM tonight. And uh, the applicant would like to request an amendment to the order of conditions into the plan showing a retaining wall between the culverts rather than the originally proposed um, slope there. So it looks like uh, Jennifer's pulling the plan up there. Okay. So essentially, this culvert, we're hoping to eliminate future problems with siltation and washout of any kind. Um, It results in a decrease of approximately 1,200 square feet of wetland impact. However, we're still planning to maintain the same size of the wetland replication area, despite the decrease in impact. So it's going from, it was was previously impacting 24 foot wide by um, 200 feet and now it's going to be 18 feet wide by 200 feet. So as, as I said, 1,200 square feet and wetland impact decreases. Um, and you can see the, the so, revised detail in the bottom right there. <clears throat> all right, so I have some bulleted things itemized. You're going to be changing a two-to-one slope to a vertical block wall, and if you can just show where that might be on your plan. Sure. So it's it's from uh, 3L up to 5O, so 400 feet right there, just to the bottom left of the um, yep the cursor, all the way up to uh, 5O right there. Yes. Okay. Just the left of the cursor. So would you, are you saying you'd like that more clearly demarcated on the plan? Uh, no, I just needed to uh, have it illustrated in the hearing. Okay. Um, you know, where, where is it called out? Is it on a different plan? So it doesn't appear to be, well, right from the, right just right left of the 3 O there, you can see the kind of, um, right where the trench drain, it goes from that up to the, the 5 Okay. Is there a label on this plan that tells the contractor they're going to build a wall? Uh, it appears that that could be a little more clear. Whatever it is. Name, it says two to one side slopes, right? So was this, was this note not changed to reflect the wall? Are these plans current? <laughs> Let's start uh, these, there. These, these yeah. plans appear to be current. Uh, it, Craig Siganowski is on. If you if he wants to pop in, if it's demarcated somewhere where I'm missing it here. Yeah. Hello. This is Craig. Um, obviously, that note wasn't corrected. Uh, she too shows the detail of the of the yeah, culvert. Can you? Yeah. Thank you. Can you show us where it's called out for? On the next sheet, in the detail, perhaps. Yes. The driveway cross sections, and then the modular concrete block retaining wall detail above it. So, <clears throat> to the right side there. Yeah, he's looking for the block wall, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just slide it over to the right. Okay. <clears throat> and then below that is a detail to show the uh, profile views. Obviously, on sheet one, it should have been the two to one slope should have been changed to uh, vertical walls. Okay, so then the opening is going to be your. Is there a pipe? Now these are uh, the um, concrete culverts. Stay the same. The two okay. 
three foot wide and the one 12 foot wide. Okay. Those are those will remain the same, and it's just the uh, the original client uh, wanted to go with the two to one slope and have us have the uh, rip wrap holding it in place, and the land was sold to the Berconis, and they decided to go with the vertical block wall. Okay, so I guess at a minimum, you just want to change that the note on the first page. Correct. Okay. Uh, I guess while I'm at it, uh, Julian, we can talk about the conservation restriction. Sure. So, um, he was supposed to prepare a conservation restriction and have it recorded. What's the status of that? Yes, so we sent Jennifer uh, and the commission kind of an update on the, the construction monitoring in order for conditions compliant. Yep, there it is. And, um, so where the, conserv the conservation restriction is at right now is the applicant has retained attorney Matt Watsky and he's working on getting a draft for that. Right, but I believe that was supposed to be in place before you started work. Correct? Was that part of the order of conditions? Yes. Okay, so, th so what that means is you're in violation of the order at the moment, correct? With proceeding without creating the conservation restriction, is that correct? Well, the order calls out for the draft to be in place, and yes, the draft is, the draft is in progress at the moment. No, but you started work before the draft was in progress, correct? Not prior to the draft being completed. So, Jennifer, did we receive the draft before they started work? No, we did not. We did not. Okay. So, my have a tendency right now to make a motion to continue this amendment until we get the final conservation restriction. Second. Oh, okay. That, uh, the motion made by Lisa, seconded by Dan Pearson. Uh, I don't know, in this circumstance, is there room for further discussion or can we... Uh, well, as far as I'm concerned, they're in violation of the order. So I wouldn't okay. entertain an amendment to an order where someone's in violation. This is the time to correct it. All right. So I think that uh, that gives the applicants, uh, the applicant personnel, um, a to-do list to work on. And so we can go ahead and um, uh, do a roll call vote on that amendment, uh, on that uh, motion on the table. So, uh, Ron? Aye. And who else we have here? Lisa, I assume you're an I. Aye. And uh, we have Dan Pearson. Aye. And Gene must be somewhere. Yeah, Gene. Aye. Okay, and I'll throw in an I. So um, I think I think we need to. Our next meeting is on um, eleven nine. Do you think you can provide us with additional Excuse information? Me. Could I say something? Uh, sure, sure. Identify yourself, please. I'm sorry. My name's Thomas Bracconi, and we have just purchased this property. Okay. And I apologize for that draft not taking place, but as soon as we uh, were totally aware of it, we started to do the draft, so um, it's going to be completed, and I'm just wondering if we could take a vote to complete what's going on subject to you getting the draft. In other words, could we have a, a vote in favor of the walls subject to the draft? No, nope. it's the other way around, sir. We just made a vote because you're in violation right now because you didn't give us the draft before you started work. So you're in violation. So perhaps instead of giving you an enforcement order, we're allowing you to give us a final and if you can get it done between now and November 9th, that's great. Okay, that's for you. Yeah. All right, well, you know, in, in point of clarity, I don't think the, the, the wall is, is the... The wall's not the issue. The, the wall <laughs> is not the issue. It's, it's the uh, appropriate procedure according to the original orders, and I think that just needs to be put uh, back in appropriate line and then the the wall doesn't seem to be terribly controversial right okay so we'll get that draft here ASAP and 
just a tentative uh, thought. You don't have a problem with building the wall, correct? Well, there's been no controversial discussion about that, so I can only speak for myself as far as what vote I would put on the table. Uh, but I didn't hear any other problems that would make the uh, the wall very objectionable. Right. I, I just want to be clear on something. Jennifer, you already got the draft, right? The draft conservation restriction? Right. No, we don't have that. that oh, you don't even have the draft. Okay. We don't, okay. Have, we don't have the draft. That's the part that's in okay. violation, right? So okay. it's listed in the order and it was recorded. And yeah. then we had pre-construction meeting and went over it. Um, so we just haven't received it yet. So okay. uh, I don't know if you're him or, or Tom, whoever wants to get in touch with Attorney Watsky, yeah. um, get that to us right away. Um, that draft was, you know, due a while ago. And then perhaps let us know what is the status of the replication area, because that also was supposed to have been done. Um, okay, okay, the status, excuse me, the status of the replication area is, um, Tim was going to talk tonight about saving some of the uh, wetland maples. Tim, are you still there? Yes, Tom, I'm here. Thank you. Yes, Tom. Um, uh, Tom and Tom can confirm this, but we were planning on constructing the replication area uh, within the coming weeks. We were hoping the order calls out for that needs to be completed prior to June 2020. Obviously, we're past that. We weren't able to get a pre-construction meeting until what was it, August, when we were out there. Um, we were just hoping to kind of have that officially amended within the order, or just kind of to have permission to be able to do that late at a later date, being now. Um, while well, we're kind of still towards the end of the dry season. But, um, so, Tim, the, the order has a very specific date of June 1. So you would need to give us a, a suggested date for the commission to look at and determine if that's reasonable or not so that we have a date to put in the amended order should they go forward with them. So you, you'd have to give us a date and say, yes, we're going to do it by this date rather than can we just do it later. So if you can think of a date and then you know email it to me and let me know, then we can forward that for the commission to review. Absolutely, and I, with with the under and we apologize for the um, the issue and the confusion of the conservation restriction not being in place yet in draft form. But um, would it be possible to still, if that date is prior to the end of this fall, and just in the name of getting that wetland replication area built, seeing as that impact has already occurred prior to this winter? Would the commission be amenable to that? Typically, you're supposed to make that replication area before you actually fill in the wetlands. And as you know, the time to do that and start planting is September and October. So our next meeting was November 9th. So, fortu so fortunately, with the drought, uh, if you could say fortunately, um, you know, we're still kind of experiencing the dryness associated that's normally associated with September, October, kind of into this, you know, mid to late October, um, would it be possible that the commission could make an exception with that in mind, allowing um, for the construction still to happen this fall, the replication area, just to ensure that, you know, all of the, um, just to ensure that it does happen and isn't just left for a long period of time as being filled and not replicated? Well, you could certainly begin the replication area and it, it likely will succeed. Uh, it, but if if it doesn't, if your plantings die and so on, you may have to revisit that and and put it in proper shape, uh, you know, in the coming months. Excuse me, one more. Speed. I'd like to just mention that we have two culverts completed right now, but we held back bringing in any material until we were going to know whether the wall would be uh, accepted. We have one more set of culverts to build at Station 450, and the reason that the replication area is imperative to get to, I need to go over the culverts to eliminate the wear and tear on the vernal stream, which we've eliminated any wear and tear on that. It's like you wouldn't even know we built the culvert. It's, it's so nice looking on both sides and underneath the culvert. I'm just done a good job overseeing it. But it's imperative that I stop bringing material in so we can get the machines over these culverts and finish up 
the replication area. We did do some clearing of it already, but we still need to get machineries in there. All right, so, so what you're saying is doing the replication area with the least damage possible requires you to continue work on the existing road work. Correct. Well, there's no issue continuing with the culvert. Okay, I was just worried about bringing in material and having washouts and being haunted down the road of worrying when I get home, we've got a rainstorm coming. Are we, uh, now we're going to, it's such a narrow uh, area to get into that the walls just would prevent any future and there'd be no more washouts at all. I've built many of these and it, it just seems like the right way to go. The first way with the riprap was fine. There was nothing wrong with that other than potential washouts of major rainstorms on a completed project. So it's pretty imperative with the season being dry now, if I could put a temporary wall between the culverts so that we don't need the wing walls, which would, would protrude to the left three feet and to the right three feet in a 45 degree angle. With the vertical wall, we're containing everything and the material we bring in which will be minimum just to get the heavy equipment over the existing culverts that we're building. That sounds like something that needs to be shown on the plan if you're not doing wing walls. Well, the, the vertical walls are replacing the wing walls. Right. In other words, these walls are going to be attached right to the 18 foot wide culverts. The wing walls will not be going in to the wetlands. We're, we're, we're giving back roughly three feet on each side. So um, that's six feet times 200, that's 1,200 feet that we don't have to worry about for future washout. It, it just, this time of year is very important. I just think building the walls will eliminate all kinds of problems in the future. Right. No, no one's questioning the walls. So are you now saying that you can't, it's not ideal to build a replication area without the walls in first? I'm, I'm no, what I'm saying is thing. I'm going to be bringing material in to get up over these culverts. And I'm just worried about the two to one slope getting into these culverts where the walls would eliminate the two to one slope, which is a pretty steep slope when it's raining out. But, well, you can't build the walls until you give us the conservation restriction. Well, correct. And I understand that, and I think you're being more than fair. But what I'm asking for is a vote, yes, we agree with the walls subject to the draft being handed to you people. So is that because That's you need to order the materials? Excuse me? Is that why you're asking, because you need to order the materials? Oh, no, no, no. I'm asking that um, I don't want to hesitate with this dry weather till November, next meeting, November 9th, all of a sudden the weather changes and we're having torrential rains. Right now it's dry, it's in great condition. You wouldn't even know we crossed the wetlands with the culverts that have already been built. So what I'm saying is if you could vote tonight that yes we agree with the walls but you can't start till you give me the draft we already made that motion sir that that was already that was already the motion on the floor was okay so you agree with the walls and i'm sorry i didn't get that part of the meeting you just can't start to build them until you give us the, the draft. that's more than fair and we'll be working diligently to grab and get that as soon as possible to you Okay, I mean, nothing's stopping you from the replication area, though. Okay, okay, from planting, that's fine. From planting. I misunderstood you. I apologize. Okay. So, Jennifer, this is Tim. Um, as part of that email that I sent you with the update on the order of conditions compliance, uh, Tom had alluded to this earlier. We were hoping to open up a discussion on saving some of the existing hummocks of large red maples in the replication area and reusing a lot of the, the cluster and the sweet pepper bush in that kind of as part of the replication area rather than cutting down these existing beautiful red maples 
growing in hummocks exactly like they are on the web, other side of the wetland line. Do, would the commission be amenable to allowing this as part of the replication area and just kind of grading around the hummocks? I'm looking for that picture. Is that that was in your email, though, wasn't it? Was it in your letter? Sure. Yeah, it was in the email. And I have it up right here if, if it's quicker for me to just share. Um, yeah. So Tim, you still um, are planning on doing that in the next couple of weeks? Doing the replication area? Yes. Yes, but um, it's my understanding that Jennifer wants us to propose an exact date to extend to. Oh, yes. Yep. Yeah. Sure. So I, I can get back to you with that uh, in an email tomorrow. It's acceptable. Okay. So uh, do, do you want me to share my screen and show the picture of this hummock? Let me yep. see. Is that working? Yes. Yeah, so this is just an example of what, um, you know, you can see the erosion control barrier in the wetland line. Kind of the way that this wetland is, is it's the hummocks and groups of these red maples and sweet pepper bush. There's several of these existing hummocks on the up a gradient side of the wetland line. And, you know, they're 20, 30 foot trees. We're hoping to just kind of rather than just chop them down and plant new little saplings, kind of incorporate them as part of the replication area. You know, we're planning on using um, a lot of, of the same exact topsoil from the area to be used as part of this and a lot of reusing some of the, the clefra shrubs as well. So my question to the commission is if this would be acceptable to do as part of the replication area. So does that mean you, redu you would reduce the tree count and the shrub count that you're planting? Of and new shrub? Trees? Correct, of new shrubs, but they would be, the number isn't reducing per se, it's just using existing trees as kind right. of. But for instance, if you called out, I'm just making this number up, if you said you were going to plant 15 new trees and you're going to now retain three, you, you're going to take credit for maintaining these three? <laughs> Excuse me, Thomas Bracconi again, sorry. No, I, I will go per plan, but I just can't speak cutting down these beautiful oh, right. trees. Well, I agree. It, it, to me, it doesn't make sense either. No. So we will go and give the exact amount of shrubs and trees per the order. But if the scientists can save these trees, then I'm one to say save the trees. Yep. I would defer to Jennifer, but it makes sense to me. Yes. Uh, I would say we would go out on site to look at that, Tim and Tom. Sure. Um, the problem I've seen in the past with that is someone has asked for that in the past, and they're saving the clumps of trees, and they end up just making a small moat or a trench around different clumps of trees, which doesn't work. And then, okay, so you know, we'll if it's use all your and clumps of red maple, then why wasn't it a wetland in the first place? So I'm going to say we should probably meet on site. Um, to revise, you can propose your um, revision to the wetland replication area at that time. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. All right. Um, are there other items on this um, request for an amendment discussion? I appreciate your time and whatever you can do. I appreciate it, and we'll get you that wetland restrictions ASAP. Yep. All right, so I think if there's no further discussion, we had a, a motion uh, uh, made and passed already, yep. and so now we can move on to uh, our next item, which is H, um, and it's concerning um, Notice of intent to file number 250-1065, Leonard Street, Phase 2, uh, at 0 Leonard Street. And um, so do we have a representative? It looks like... Well, they've requested a continuance to November 9th. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to continue file 250-1065 to November 9th. Motion made by Dan and seconded by? Second. By Ron. Uh, roll call vote, Ron? Aye. Gene? Aye. 
And Lisa? Abstain. Okay, and then uh, Dan Pearson? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye as well. So that uh, uh, hearing is uh, continued until November 9th. Uh, item I, Notice of Intent for, uh, for File Number 250-1057 for Reseto Brothers uh, concerning 253 Mansfield Avenue. Uh, and this concerns uh, converting a commercial building to a 40B multi-story, multi-unit residential apartment building. Um, it looks like they have requested a continuance as well. Correct, to November 23rd. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I will uh, make a motion to continue file 250-1057 to the November 23rd, 2020 meeting. Motion made by Dan and seconded by? Second. Ron? Uh, roll call vote, Ron? Aye. Jean? Aye. Uh, Lisa? Aye. And Dan? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. So uh, that, that motion carries, continuing file number 250-1057 to November 23rd. And then we have uh, item J. Do we have any comments about this? We do not. Okay. Uh, now we have, uh, uh, I guess we should uh, do the, uh, well, item, let's see, we had, uh, Attachment, um, oh, it's not labeled here. Order of, amended order of conditions for Steve Lydell. I don't think that was uh, controversial. Is that correct? Oh, well, it's not amended. It's a boilerplate order of conditions. Oh, it says amended at the top. It, it does say amended, but uh, so yeah. this this is a. Uh, yeah. All right. So I guess the first discussion is getting rid of the word amended. And any other, um, so the potential burn of pool. They did give me that number. So the, the, the number will be included? Yes. And uh, let's see. Do we typically know which wetland that's found in or no? The Verna pool. Um, it's the only, there's only one wetland on the site. Okay. Well, that narrows it down then. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot what the plan looked like. Okay. <laughs> a good question. All right. Any other items other than, uh, pretty much boilerplate? So I'll make a motion to issue the order of conditions for file 250-1067 as discussed. A motion made by Lisa and seconded by? Second. Ron? A roll call vote? Ron? Aye. Jean? Aye. Lisa? Aye. And Dan Pearson? Aye. And I'll throw in an aye. And I think the next item we, we actually do not Vote on or do we? Uh, this is the the amended order for two, file number ten thirty seven. Um. Yeah, I think we're ready to. I think. Oh, I, oh yes, I I'm just getting it. So that was uh, the project uh, next to the the North School, is it? Correct. Okay. So, Jennifer, the only what comment I had, I had on this one. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. I thought I had it ready um, to look at, but it's not on my desk. You, you gave us a copy. Okay, good. <laughs> um, All right, so. Um, comment on number seven, which actually came out of the hearing, because it wasn't clear that the amendment or the relief from the waiver from the stormwater bylaw was just for the front of the property okay. and not the um, panels themselves. 
Okay. So I can... However you want to word that. So, and, and, and do we make a finding that the front portion constitutes redevelopment then, I guess? Maybe that clears it up. Okay. It constitutes redevelopment and, and thereby we, you know, grant the waiver for eight tenths of an inch. <laughs> yep, got it. Okay. All right, and then uh, I see uh, the other item that was changed is, uh, uh, well, we have 57 and 58. Yeah, it's just that last part. Right. So if the, there's no further discussion, we can entertain a motion to accept uh, this amended order. I'll make that motion. Motion made by Lisa and seconded by? Second. Ron? Roll call vote, Ron? Aye. Gene? Aye. Lisa? Aye. And Dan Pearson? Aye. And I, from myself. All right, so um, we're back with... Um, up to the administrative approvals, just um, two people had some hazardous trees that needed to be removed, and I, I approved those. So now you're up to the minutes. All right. So, John. Yeah, Dan, you have a question? Uh, page two of the minutes. Okay. I think what you mean in that big paragraph, in the very center of the big paragraph, is not doll as in the anthropomorphic toy but rather d-a-h-l as in winthrop doll okay thank you sure Good. Yeah. all right and then uh any other notes on that bit of minutes and if not, we can consider a motion to accept them as submitted. I'll make that motion. Second. A motion made by Elise and seconded by Dan Pearson. All, uh, uh, Ron? Aye. Roll call will not. Okay. And Jean? Aye. Lisa? Hi. And Dan? Hi. And myself is an I. So next item we have new business. Not really. Old business. Uh, nothing for older. Not new. really. Um, we have two people who are also interested in the vacancy on the Conservation Commission, so I don't, if they wanted to um, okay. uh, unmute themselves, they can say hello if they want. If not, they can continue lurking, and hopefully we'll hear from them later. Uh, but just uh, by way of information, um, it would be ideal if they wish to submit a letter uh, requesting that they be appointed to the Conservation Commission, as dynamic as this uh, Zoom meeting is, uh, they can certainly do that anytime, even without introducing themselves. Okay, and it looks like Tama has unmuted herself, so feel free to say say a, a hello, Tama. Yep. Hi, this is Tama Vest. I uh, I live in been in Norton for about uh, seven years, six years now. So um, I I bought some converse, conservation land and. Uh, spend a little bit of my time doing uh, environmental type regulatory things. So anyway, just wanted to say hello and throw my name in the in the hat. And would this be your first involvement with uh, with uh, regulatory structure of town government? Um, I would say so. Yeah. I mean, I, I've participated a little bit with the land preservation um, society, but um, you know, other than doing things related to schools and town meetings and that kind of thing, really haven't had too much experience on the town, uh, the official town side. Well, I will say from my personal point of view, this is citizen involvement with government. I won't say it's necessarily 
from the bottom up, it does get you into the mud, but then it can get you all the way to the mud of Washington if you want to go there. <laughs> well, I prefer to stay local, but thanks for the tip. <laughs> all right, so if uh, there's no one else who wants to say hi, uh, well, I see, I don't know if John is the other person who's interested, he's trying to connect to audio. No, well, someone named uh, Matthew Harkin, and um, I think we had already received the letter from Terry. All right, so um, do we have any other items where we can consider a motion to adjourn? Not that I'm aware of, unless someone has a question. All right, well, until, uh, let's see, November 9th, our next meeting. Uh, I just... I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Julian and Lisa for taking up the reins of the um, uh, chairman seat. Well, it's not really, well, it's chairperson, Dan. Vice chair, just so you know. Thank you for nitpicking, yeah. <laughs> and the vice chair, okay. From, from Mr. Nitpicker himself. <laughs> well, Mr. Nitpicker I was going to say. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think we can consider a motion to adjourn. Uh, I'll make that motion, Mr. Chairman. Right. Second. And uh, Ms. Vice Chairman as well. Chair. Uh, Vice oh, Chair. Vice, you gotta, you, 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 Vice you. Chair. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I, I don't think we'll do a roll call vote on that. So, until uh, next time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Good evening.